Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Uh, thanks for stopping by to check out this uh this quick little podcast on nymphing. This is another solo show. I'm not sure when the last time I did a solo show. Uh, show, huh, wow, it's getting uh, it's getting there. Uh, solo show was, I believe, the ultimate steelhead gear list. I uh, maybe uh, I'll put a link to that one. But this is going to be all about nymphing, and I've been nymphing a long time since. Uh, I'm not sure if my first fish was caught on a nymph, either that or a wet fly, but um, that's what happened. And then now. Uh, you know, obviously the Euro nipping game, there's a bunch of other things out here. And I wanted to do a little summary of a article I wrote and, uh, and this can be found at, I'm not sure exactly. I'll put a link in the show notes. I want to say wetflyswing.com slash nymphing would be, uh, would be where we'll put it. And I'm going to go through just on that post. It talks about some basic, it's more of a, like a beginner uh, part of it is a beginner to nymphing article. Um, so if you're brand new to it, uh, I cover that there. But I did want to just briefly today touch on some Euro nymphing tips. And these really come from, because I am not a Euro nymphing uh, master or anything like that. Um, in fact, I just recently kind of got started on it. But I did want to talk about a summary of the tips from some of my best guests. And I've actually had, oh, a number of the best Euro nymphy, Euro nymphers on uh, in the world, probably uh, in this country. Devin Olson, uh, Lance Egan. Um, and a, and a few others that we've had on, I will talk about here. I'm just, I'm just kind of scrolling down through and I wanted to talk about, I've got some nymph patterns there that I touch on, but that's not what I want to go into today. I want to talk about the, uh, kind of the tips. I think it was like a 17 tips I want to say. So yeah, I cover everything in that article, I guess just briefly, let me just run down through the table, table of contents. So here's the table of contents for what we have. It says, uh, part one is basic nymphing. So I get into what is nymph fishing, um, kind of the history of nymph fishing, a little bit on the life cycle, uh, nymphing techniques, the Euro, uh, different tight line, bobber, stuff like that. The rig, the rod, the gear, uh, tips on casting, landing fish, and then I get into some flies and things like that. So that's kind of part one. Part two is really all Euro nymphing. Again, on that one, I talk about what is Euro nymphing, uh, the Euro nymphing rig, Euro nymphing the rod, flies. And then I get into these 15 Euro nymphing tips, which actually I think is 17 now because I added a couple. But I'm going to scroll down. That's what I'm going to cover today. And there's also a couple other awesome resources on there that are at the very end. One of them is uh, some of the modern nymphing. There's a class, like an hour, two hour long class that um, Lance did the fly fish food guys. That's a, like a YouTube video, but here they are. So these are just taken, I guess these are the, uh, yeah, I have, I have 17 here, but let, let's see it. So here we go. This is the top 17 Euro nymphing tips from mostly from Devin, the podcast with Devin. And then there's another one with Lance Egan, um, that I'll note in the show notes and you can get these tips and listen to those shows there. So if you haven't heard those, definitely go listen because those guys are the, the rock stars. So if number one, uh, I have here understanding where to fish based on water temperature. So, I mean, not only nymphing, but just fishing in general, this is key. So just knowing, having that thermometer, uh, we've had other guests who've talked about that on the podcast. Um, you know, uh, Peter from Ascent Fly Fishing, he's got his tools that he, uh, he loves to use. But you should always have a thermometer and know the temperatures because that's going to dictate where the fish are, you know warmer, cooler, deeper, shallower water sort of thing. So that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, it says reading water, look for any spot in the river that changes current or creates holding water. So again, this can go for all types of fishing, but, um, you know, again, reading water. So how do you read water? Not always an easy thing, but look for those spots again, where the fish have a place to rest. So if you can see that from the service, sometimes you can, sometimes you need to go back during a low flow uh, season and see what structures are there and then remember that during high flows. Number three is base tippet length on water depth, but fish as short as possible. So base tippet length on water depth. So for Euro nymphing, you know, you can adjust that length. That's the beauty of the Euro nymphing, right? You've got from the tippet ring, you're going to run your flies off of that. So depending on the depth, and I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I guess just nymphing the 1.5 
versus the depth. So if the water is five feet, um, then, you know, 1.5 would be a seven and a half foot tippet. Right. Uh, and I don't know if that's always the exact, that's kind of what I, what, what I've used in the past. Um, and again, we can follow up with Devin on that to get more answers there. Uh, number four, don't cast more than 20 to 30 feet ever, ever, ever while nipping. So that's, uh, that's another killer tip. Again, letting you know that we're not casting some beautiful tight line across the river, uh, like 50 feet across and hitting a spot. These are your, the tightest possible, as tight as possible, you know, 20, 30 feet is max. If you can get closer, a rod length, uh, even better. Number five, if waiting for the fish, for the feel of a fish to strike, you've probably missed it. So again, Euro nymphing is, um, is not about feel necessarily, right? I mean, it is because you will feel, uh, cause you are tight to the fish, but that's why the cider is so important. You know, the cider is, uh, is your, uh, you know, method for knowing when the fish strikes. And again, I lay that out. There's actually a video in the blog post of Devin, um, part of, I think Gilbert Rowley's channel where he walks through Devin's, um, uh, exact, uh, rig setup and talking about that. Um, so number six, use jig hooks. So you hook the fish in the upper jaw. This is a killer one because why are jig hooks great? I mean, there's probably a number of awesome reasons. One of them is that it gets your fly up, um, off the bottom. So it probably doesn't snag as much, but also the hooking. So it because it hooks in the top of the jaw, you're going to have better control and better be able, you're going to be able to land the fish better than if it was hooked in the lower. So another killer tip. Uh, number seven, use hot spots on fly patterns and test different colors and locations throughout the season. Um, so there you go. Hot spots, right? So you see that purple or that pink or that red or that crazy looking fly. I mean, that's what Euro nymphs are known for. They don't look like anything. They just look crazy. And that's one of the big successes is that even though matching the hatch is, is kind of killer and a lot of fun, uh, you don't have to do that. And sometimes a big pink collar or tail or red or something is, is worth way more than anything else. Uh, let's see. Number eight, cut the tag ends off of your knots close after seating them correctly. So this goes to knots and this is something that I've always struggled with. Again, I've a lot of times, especially with steelhead fishing left a, a pretty long tag end just in case, you know, you got that fish that's really pulling on it and it's, uh, it's making it, you know, just in case that knot slips, but but the point here is that you do not have to um, worry about that if you seat it correctly. So if you tie your knot, pull it very tight and get to seat very uh, closely and tightly, um, then you can cut it right off tight. And that's important because it's going to slide through your guides a lot easier when you're landing fish, especially with these long leaders. So that's key. Um, and I mean, I guess that's probably the, the biggest thing that, you know, people worry about. So. Uh, so let's move on. Number nine, get rid of the uh, welded loop and use a, ne a needle nail knot instead. So I love, I've used nail knot tools for years. The needle nail knot, um, I guess is a little bit different, but uh, but this is one thing where you can, again, the loop is, is kind of a knot that goes to the guide. So if you can remove any sort of friction when you're, when you're using, when you're fishing these, these uh, rigs, then that's going to be another important thing to do. Uh, number 10, use fluorocarbon for your tippet to get the fly down quicker. So fluorocarbon not only helps in uh, fish seeing, you know, it reduces the chance that they're going to see your stuff, but also there is a little bit of a minor uh, sinking from fluoro. So it's just, you know, it's maybe minor, but again, all these little things add up. Number 11, practice casting in the park so you can hit a three to four foot window. So this again is one of those things where if the fish is in a little slot, maybe it's a little foot spot here, two foot spot there, you know, sometimes, you know, to take 10 casts to get there is not where we need to be. We need to be able to pull up one cast, boom, you're in that spot, you're in that window. And to get there, you need to practice. You need to practice casting. Uh, number 12, number 12, keep your cider off of the water wherever possible. So, so again, you've got the, a lot of times these long ciders are a few feet long. So as you're holding your rod tip above the water, that cider you're, you're controlling and you want to keep, you know, basically the same thing as much of that off the water as possible. So you want to have a direct connection uh, to the fish. Number 13, attractor patterns are better most of the time. So again, this goes back to some of that spotting, uh, hotspot stuff. So attractor patterns, if you look at your box, you don't have to have the exact, um, 
you know, mayfly matches, but attractors are usually the better way to go. Number 14, spend extra cash to get high quality Euro nymphing hooks. So, you know, again, why do you need high quality gear? Because sometimes you might get that one opportunity. And if you've got a crappy hook and it either doles or bends or breaks, then you're pissed, even though you spent hundreds of dollars, potentially maybe thousands on these trips. So just spend a little, a few cents extra per hook to make sure that when you get that fish of a lifetime, you keep it. Number, number, number 15, use high quality tungsten beads to assure fast sinking. So there's cheap quality tungsten and there's high quality. The cheaper stuff, there's a lot of reasons why it's not good. Uh, it's not going to sink as well. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. But just pay, again, a little bit extra to get the good stuff because you're going to be thanking yourself later. Number 16, for each pattern, have a variety of bead sizes to increase the different sinking rates. So on all your flies, if you have one pattern and it's a Frenchie, you should have, you know, five other uh, different weights or different bead sizes or, or, you know, just you want to have just a loaded a bunch of different things so you can get down if you need to get down in six inches versus getting down to six feet. Uh, you can do that uh, quickly by just changing out, boom, changing out your fly. Um, so again, I don't think the patterns is as much uh, the design as having the different weights. And uh, in number 17, I can't remember who said this, but um, thin to win, hashtag thin to win, thin to win. Keep your patterns thin. Uh, something not always easy to do, especially if you're a beginner. So if you're listening to this and you're a beginner, one of the biggest fly tying tips Euro or anything I can give you is go less, always use less than you think you'll need. Start out small. You can always add more materials and a bulky fly is the biggest struggle for new fly tires. So if you're new, there's your fly tying tip of the day, uh, thin to win. So, um, so that wraps us up for the 17 tips. I want to thank, uh, Devin Olson and, uh, Lance Egan and all our other uh, guests we've had on the podcast that have talked about Euro. Uh, these, uh, tips have come from them directly. You can listen to each of those podcasts, which are all epic. Uh, Devin was on a couple times. He talked about, I think the second time at one of his books, uh, tactical fly fishing, I believe. And, uh, this is just awesome. I hope you enjoyed this. If you can, maybe let me know. This is only about a 13 minute, uh, in that range, right? A pretty short one. And I'd love to know if you think this is helpful. Um, you know, is this like, or do you want to just hear my hour, hour and a half long uh, episodes and interviews? Uh, or do you like these little snippets? Because I'm trying to highlight a little bit because I know those podcasts, sometimes there's a lot of content in them. But if you could break it down into the 15 things, the top tips, which I've kind of done for Euro, at least for you know a couple of episodes, then I think I'm hoping that's helpful. I know it is for me because I just think like thin to win, thin to win. OK, I, I won't forget that. Right. Hashtag thin to win. That's what I got for you. I'm going to bust out of here. Um, I am talking today on the PodTrack P4. This is this is a killer podcasting unit. Um, so if you're thinking about getting into podcasting, um, I'll leave a link out to the Outdoors Online Marketing Podcast, where I help people uh, jump through the hoops quickly to launch a podcast. And I'm, I'm hot on helping people get into it, uh, especially other fly fishing and fishing podcasts. So that's what I got for you today. I want to thank you for taking the time today to stop by and listen. Listen in. Um, this has been a lot of fun. The top 17 Euro nipping tips uh, from our first, uh, I guess, first big season. And I hope you have a good day. I hope you can get on the water. See you. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.